Hey everyone, you ever been confused over which 3D modeling workflow to use? Low poly or sub D modeling? Or what's even the difference between the two? Today, this video is gonna focus on comparing both sub D and low poly modeling. And whether you're a beginner or an advanced modeler, this video is gonna be a huge benefit for you because I'm taking my exact questions that I asked when I was first learning 3D and questions from my actual students from 10 years of courses. So let's start with sub-D modeling. Sub-D modeling is used in industries like VFX, CGI, product visualization, marketing, advertising, to name a few. This is because we need the assets to hold up at very high resolutions, which is where the subdivision comes in. Subdivision allows you to increase the surface geometry to whatever resolution that you need come render time. To get the best results, you're gonna to wanna to follow these three tips. Using quad faces to get the best surface detail. Aim for an even distribution of edges. This is what's going to hold your model together in between all of your main topology. And holding lines, this is for sharp corners and helps you keep those details without losing that form. So why quads? Quads give you the best type of subdivision without visual artifacts. On curved surfaces, quads are most ideal. You can see this in this comparison here. This curved geometry is composed of primarily quads versus this model that has tries and end guns. Tries and end guns are okay, primarily on flat surfaces. But when you start to have curved surfaces, that's where all the pinching and artifacts come in. Now, I have seen some wizardry of people online using end guns in pretty creative ways. Those are coming from people that really have an expert knowledge in topology. So before you jump down that end gun rabbit hole, be sure to focus on the fundamentals of quad. You also want to minimize poles. This is where five, six, or, or more edges meet at a single vertex. This also causes visual artifacts but just know that there's no way to avoid poles, especially when you have to reroute edges. So they're definitely needed, but you want to be careful of when and where to use them. One of the most overlooked workflows when it comes to sub D modeling is edge distribution. See this example of this cube being subdivided with no distribution of edges. You only have your holding lines. So what happens is those edges at the corners are being pulled from the corner in order to maintain that form because you are interpolating between each edge. So in order to maintain your original form and volume, you need to make sure to have an even distribution of edges. Now don't worry, I see this a lot where people think that, well, I have a sub-D model, but is it too high poly? If the end goal is offline rendering, then you don't need to worry about optimizing your model because the final output is a still frame. So the primary goal of sub-D modeling is to get the best looking model possible. Now, even with a solid distribution of edges, you still need to have holding lines. So you want to bevel and chamfer your corners. I've seen people use just two edges or a single segment of faces. I always recommend at minimum use two faces or three edges for those hard lines that need to look like they're creased. This will make sure that your model retains your hard corners while retaining its ultimate form. Now that we got all that, well, when do we actually use sub demodeling? When is it absolutely required? One easy answer is it just depends on your pipeline. But after that, the why isn't just about creating satisfying looking topology. It is absolutely needed when you have to zoom in on your model. If you have a camera pushing in super close to a model, but you don't have the ability to subdivide and increase detail, well, you're back to modeling from square one. If you have a model that's sub D ready that can increase in subdivisions, depending on the distance from camera, then it will work perfectly within that pipeline. Not only that, it gives you a better time UV mapping, rigging, skinning, hair, fur, simulation, and just helps you downstream through the entire pipeline. Quick interruption. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably interested in 3D modeling and topology. So I'm excited to announce that I'm putting together a 3D modeling topology masterclass. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, this is going to help improve your skills in 3D modeling. This is just the first course. And trust me, you're in good hands. I'm an industry professional and I've been teaching for over 15 years. And I have some of the most popular topology videos on my YouTube. And this is going to be one of the first of many courses on my platform. I will be covering the entire 3D art pipeline, starting with modeling, all the way through rendering for both offline and real-time rendering. So stay tuned and be sure to check out my Patreon for early access information. So I'll see you there. Now let's talk about low poly modeling. This is where performance matters. Real-time performance. 
For subD modeling, you're just creating a model that's going to appear in a single rendered frame, whether it's rendered at cinematic 24 frames per second. Each frame is already pre-rendered. But for games, you now have to balance detail and performance because sometimes you may have to run on low-end devices like mobile, or you have a really high-end FPS cap, like maybe 120 frames per second. Optimization and detail is what matters here. So let's talk about context. I have brought this up in past videos, but the context you're creating this asset matters. You need to figure out if this is being used for PC, mobile devices, consoles, even web or AR and VR. Once you know that, is this going to be a hero asset? Will this be close up right in front of the camera or will this be a background prop where you can get away with more optimization and less detail? Also, will it be animating? Is this just rigid animations like a weapon reloading? Or is this soft body deformation like a character running in clothing? All of these are gonna have a direct impact on what is allowed for your poly count. Now, if you're concerned about this in a studio environment, just know that these technical specifications are given to you per asset. But as you are creating these assets for your portfolio, you want to be able to explain to somebody what type of asset and the context that this is being used for. Now, how do we achieve such high detail in our low poly models? We can't just subdivide our meshes into the millions and drop it into our games. The answer lies in focusing on the silhouette and mastering texturing. Texture baking allows us to take all that high poly detail and bake it down into a texture map. Now, of course, you can use a sub D model. I've covered workflows on my channel where I create a high poly sub D and then bake that down to the low poly. But you can also use sculpts, CAD data, or really any other workflow that outputs high poly data. Because what matters here is baking that into the texture and the low poly itself. So this gives us the best of both worlds, allowing us to have that high detail and optimization. So what are some practical tips for your low poly workflows? The number one priority is the silhouette of your model. You can think of your silhouette as your blueprint of your model. Right out the gate, you'll be able to know where you need to invest the most amount of geometry in your model. Take this AGL long code that I created. Clearly, the bore, the barrel are very cube-like and don't need really that much geometry at all. But something much more organic like the cylinder, where the rounds will be held, or the grip, that needs a lot more geometry to hold the form and silhouette of the model. The goal is to make sure that you know the distance that this will be used. So will this be an FPS camera? Will this be a third person over the shoulder? Once you have that information, that'll give you a good range on where to invest the most amount of your detail. You can even do a lot of pre-planning before you get into it. I typically focus on this during the block out phase of my modeling. Now, why are tries necessary during the modeling phase? If everything gets triangulated in a real-time game engine, can't I just model in quads and then import it and let the engine take care of it? Well, during the modeling phase, you as a modeler and artist have complete control over the topology and you can use those tries to terminate edge flow and increase the amount of optimization. If you import that default quad model that's just triangulated, you're now left with a bunch of detail that you just don't need. And again, this works for both rigid and organic models. So think gun and weapon models and character models. You just need to make sure that you don't put those tries right in areas of deformation. So think the neck, elbows, knees, hips, those should be maintained as quads all the way through the end of the modeling process. So this question constantly comes up in my Discord and I hear this in person from all the years that I've been teaching. I've created this flow chart to help you kind of decide whether or not you need a low poly or sub D model. I'll be putting this up on my Patreon completely for free, so be sure to check that out. So I created that flowchart to kind of help visualize when and where you can sub D or low poly model. Now remember, you can always do both if you're low poly modding through texture baking. Just know that both sub D and low poly modeling has its place within the world of 3D modeling. It's not as simple as one or the other. And don't forget, it's not about the number of tries, it's how you use them. So I hope this helps as you start your next project. And let me know down in the comments if you'd like to add anything. I'm always open to hearing more from people learning 3D art as well as professionals and even hobbyists that have been doing this over the years. And finally, a huge thank you to all my patrons. My Patreon has grown very fast over these past few months, which is super exciting and continues to motivate me to create more content. You'll get access to my latest source files, my Discord channel, and get early access to future videos. So with that, I'll see you around.